Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 10 of the Endless Runner series. In this episode, we are going to implement a simple death functionality that restarts the level once the character hits an obstacle. But before we are going to implement that, we are creating the second obstacle first, the big obstacle, and get it working. So let's get started. So before we implement the death functionality of the character, let's create a big obstacle first and hook this up. And let's start by creating a new blueprint. Select obstacle again, call it BP underscore obstacle big. Open it up, select our static mesh, look for the big one and also rotate it 90 degrees in the C value. Compile it, save it, and let's implement the code functionality to say from the 50% of spawning an obstacle, we also now say from those 50%, 25 will be small and 25 will be big obstacles. So let's go into our floor tile first, copy this so we need the class for the big obstacle and say big obstacle class, save this one. And in our floor tile, let's check also if our big obstacle class is valid. Then we spawn our lane items and we will copy this and say else if so now we need to adjust the values so from 0 0.5 to 0.75 f and from 0.75 to 1 f let's compile this go into our editor and under floor tile, let's select our big obstacle class, save it and hit play. And you can see now we spawn big and small obstacles and we can't really jump over. We can jump over them, but later on the collider will actually destroy our character. So this works, now we have small and big obstacles and now let's implement the death functionality. The way death works is that if, if the character hits an obstacle, the obstacle recognizes the collision and calls the death function of the character. And in the death function of the character, we will spawn a particle system, which will be the explosion particle system. And then we play a sound at the same time, which is that explosion death sound. And then we will call another function after two seconds that will then restart the level. So let's get started. Let's get into our code, minimize this. So in our obstacle, we need to bind a function to the static meshes on component hit function. So what we would do is say static mesh on component hit. Dot add dynamic, specify this, and then we need to specify from our obstacle, specify on obstacle hit. This function doesn't exist yet, we need to implement it, but we need the signature of it. So if we go again into on component hit, we have the on component hit signature basically from the first two is the specification of it and this is the signature of our function let's copy this go back into our obstacle h and we create a u function call it void on obstacle hit paste in the values add a semicolon here and like you've seen in the previous episode, remove every second comma. Then let's 
implement it. And you can see the error is gone here. And now we have our on obstacle hit. So let's implement this. What we need is our a run character, a pointer to it, called run character, and cast the other actor to it. Like you've seen in the floor tile when we when the character hits the trigger box, like you see here, where we check if it's the character, if it's valid then we can do stuff. And similar like this, where we get the timer manager and stuff, so we need to call another one after we played the sound and the explosions. So let's do this. So if run character, if it's the run character, then we say run character dot death which doesn't exist yet. So let's implement this, go to our run character, the public section, make it the U function, make it proof and callable and call it void death. And let's make a protected U function and call it void on death. So that's the one we call after one or two seconds. Let's implement this one and implement this one and move this underneath here. So what we can do now is testing it if it works. So let's do a log entry, log temp, make it a warning, give it a text and say character died. Let's compile this. It compiled, but the editor crashed. So like it did in last video, but this is normal. So don't worry if this happens, just open up the editor again and let's see if this works. So go into the output log, clear the log, hit play, and let's try to hit and you can see character died. The death function is called several times. Our functionality works. So let's go back and finish the rest. So, so like I mentioned, there are several things now we need to do. We need to play particle system, need to play a sound, and we need a timer to then call the other function after a few seconds. So let's go into our run character.h file and add some new properties. So the first property would be for the particle system. We make it edit anywhere so that we can add it in the blueprints. Make it blueprint read only. Give it a category of, let's say, assets. And then make it class u particle system. It's not a component, it's just a reference to a particle system that we can then set in the blueprints itself. Death particle system. Let's copy this and forward declare a U sound base, which is the class to use for sounds and specified like this. So let's compile this and set it up. Go to the editor, go to our run character. And now we can see under our assets category, we can now set the particle system and the death sound. So we have the explosion here, and let's say we use the explosion one sound. So compile this, save this, and this is hooked up now. So let's go back into code. So in our CPP file, let's start by implementing the functionality. So what we need to do is to spawn the emitter, the particle system, at the location of the character and the sound at the location of the character. So what we need for that is f vector location and say get actor location. Then we check to see if our death particle system is valid and to spawn an emitter at the location we use the U gameplay statics library. So you gameplay statics and there is a function called spawn emitter at location. 
And for that we need the world, so let's do this first. U world equals get world. Then we can use the world here. Of course, check if world and then the death particle system and the location. The same we do for the sound. If death sound is valid, then we use gameplay statics again and this time call play sound at location. Give it a world. Use the death sound and the location. What we then need to do is get our mesh and set its visibility to false. And then, like we did with the tile trigger box, we need to specify a timer and call our on death function because we want to at least have it one second running and not directly restart the level. So let's go into our run character, make and define property f timer handle and call it restart timer handle. Then in our cpp file again we get the world or we have the world so we can say world dot get timer manager dot set timer we use our restart timer handle call this and then say a run character dot on death and we specify one second delay and in our on death function we need to restart the level. To restart the level, it's a bit not tricky, but we need to execute the console command. So there is the functionality in the uKismet system library. It's called execute console command. We get the world and give it a text and the command that it's is called restart level. This is all we need so far. Let's compile this. And before we go in, remember there's a good practice to clear your timers after usage. So we say if restart ha timer handle is valid, and then we say get world timer manager dot clear timer and call use the restart handle timer handle for that. And then we execute the console commands. So compile again, and then I think we're good to go. Compiled. So before we actually test this, there's one thing missing. And what you've seen before with the log output, that this death function was called several times. So if we would play this now, this would call several times and try to restart it several times. So this is not what we need. We need needed to be called one time and for that we need a bool value. Let's make it a u property. Call it bool is that equals false. And what we now do is in here we say b is that equals true. And what we also need to do is disable the player input and pass in null pointer. We don't need a player controller for that. And what we need to check is if not b is dead, then actually do this. So only execute the function or the functionality only once. And on death, what we can do is then say b is dead equals false. We might need this later on, but if we restart the level, it's going to be cleared anyways. But we just need to make sure that only this is called once and then we execute the restart level after one second. So let's test this. Let's play this. And so in the editor, let's hit play. Let's hit an obstacle. It explodes and restarts the level. You can jump over it. You can see even the collider from those big colliders, even if we jump over small, this works, but now with the big ones, it shouldn't. So yeah, it works. So this is it for this episode. 
And in the next episode, we are going to implement the coin pickup functionality. So thank you for watching. I hope you really liked this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. And please like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new episodes are coming out. This would really help me. So thanks again and see you in the next one.